Howdy, I'm Cyberrax, and I'm going to talk to you about Save Six Mods today. A lot of people always ask about, well, what mods do you use, Cyberrax? And uh, I'm going to run through them really quick so you can see. So uh, I'll just, like, um, just, you know, click them. Um, maybe I can do the whole, like, um, Windows Key Plus. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're just gonna. So we got. <clears throat> uh, auto record, goody huts, better builder charge tracking, better climate, better espionage, better front end, better loading, better report, better tech, better trade, better world rank, better. Civ 6 harmony. Expanded light. Oh, I lost it. There's so many of them. Uh, enhanced mod. Oh, wait. Did I go too far? Yeah, because I must have jumped down. Colored history. Detailed, enhanced mod uh, manager, which is the screen you're seeing now. Man, this thing is horrible because when it clicks, it, it must be clicking the entire thing. So I got to here. I'll click once and then I got to go. There it is. Uh, Coexisting districts and resources. Colored fog of war. I'll, quite a few people asked for that one. Because it, it looks really cool. Colorized historic moments, detailed map tracks, enhanced mod. Oh, we got that one. Extended policy cards, um, extra strategic resources, government, history city. Improved city names, uh, more lenses, ocean tile resources. That's a good one. Oops, all resources. I don't. Oh, I don't remember what that one. Is. I think that means all resources are on the map. Um, or maybe that gets rid of duplicate resources from the packs in case the packs have duplicates. Um, buildings, uh, real fixes, fixes, governor, inspector, real, uh, great people, uh, natural disaster, Nobel Prize, science, tech tree, real tech tree, remove duplicate resources, uh, artifact. Uh, to do to do all reveal all resources select natural wonders angel falls barbarians minus minus civ select fuji global relation page grand there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of these oceans policy manager resources simple ui adjustments Uh, monument at a glance. It's really abundant resources, not another map pack. And then I'll do the same thing, but I'll turn off the zoom in case that's causing you problems. And I'll just like scroll through it really quick. That oh, way well, you can just pause if you want to like really read through them all one by one. There's 67 of them that I've got on. Um, these I've had problems with or I don't like or they don't work. So those are all those. So the next step is let's jump back and then let's look at a new game. 
So if I'm going to start a new game, I have this load config set up and I'll run through. You can see it has like all of the different things. So what I've been doing is enormous. Sorry, my cat's quite cry. Um, and then I'm doing like five or so city states. And I know you say, oh, that's a really low number, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I do one disaster. So let's start at the top. So we're doing that. I'm doing prints, blah, blah, blah. Um, start era game speed. Now I want to do game speed marathon. I, there's even a, a mod to do like epic, uh, marathon and even longer, but I don't have that one on. So that's good. And then we want everything. So yeah, the map. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exclude. Nope. Nope. World age. It occurred to me that some people didn't know that the world age controls how many mountains there are versus hills versus flatlands. And so there's a lot more volcanoes on a new map versus than on an old map. So I want a new map because I really like mountains and all that stuff. If you want lots of mountains and lots of hills and uh, like ranges and stuff, that's what you want. Um, the starting bonus, legendary, template. I like um, standard for temperature, but I like wet for rain. I want a whole bunch of those, you know, woods and marshlands and all that stuff. Coastal, empty. Um, this is how much sea rising there's going to be. So I want that to be really low. I don't want the sea. I don't want the sea to rise at all. I think that's bullshit. Um, so, oh, shit. Oh, no. Yeah, sea level low. And then... So the map has less water, which the maps always have plenty of water anyways. And then resource quantity abundant. Uh, I like to do cultural starts. And then here's where the fun comes in. So um, a few things. No ice near land so that you can get all the way around it. I think that's important. I think it's ridiculous if you can't, like, go around in a boat. Um, okay. So you have this apoc apocalypse mode, and then you have barbarian clans mode. I really like this one. This is one of my favorites. This is why we're not doing a lot of city states because what happens is the barbarians are tribes instead of just like barbarians, and you kill them and then they're gone. Instead, it's a tribe, and you can go like kill their guys, and you can. Um, you know, pillage them for for money, but over time they're going to turn into an actual city-state. And so it's a really cool concept because you don't know how many city-states you're really going to have or where they're going to be, and they'll develop throughout the life of the game instead of just being, oh, you start out with 10, and if, you know, nine of them get killed, and then that's it. In, that's not how this works. You start out, and even at the very end of the game, people could still be finding barbarians, or barbarians could show up on a coastline somewhere that's empty, and then they could turn in over time to a new city-state, which is really fascinating. I really enjoy that. Um, dramatic age, ages. I don't really like this one because I already have... I already have a love-hate relationship with how the Golden Ages work. Um, Heroes and Le Le Legends, I really enjoy this one. Um, so you have governors, right? And you can get heroes as part of... At Wait, hold on. Let me put that back. No, that's for... Governors is for the secret societies. Heroes is you can get special units that are really powerful and have special abilities like hercules or something and then they can go around and fight for you or do special stuff and you earn them by doing different things or by um unlocking different things so that's a fun one 
uh, monopolies and corporations when you have lots of luxuries or resources you can get extra stuff by making a corporation out of it which gives you more buildings and more things that's a fun one secret societies is uh more governors which gives you more special unlocks and access to like city states uh texan civic shuffle mode if you've never played modded civ and you've never shuffled your tech and your civ shuffle mode you you're not even playing civilization right in my opinion because i I agree that Civilization, I played them all from the very beginning on Amiga I start, is where I started. I agree that it's been set for history. But as a sandbox, having a set tech and civics the same every game, and you've played this game hundreds of times or thousands of times, is doesn't make sense. But having it shuffle... So the order of them is different every game. Man, it makes for a lot of different gameplay. It makes for a much more enjoyable, repeatable experience that I bet you've just never experienced. So you really need to have this on and play this way. And then, because uh, what it does is it means you don't get to see the text in the future. Like, you can't just say, oh, get to railroad right away. You don't know where railroad is. So you still do the basic text, but they're all shuffled within each of the the time frames or whatever, each of the different breakup of, of time. Deck, uh, whatever they call it. Sorry, brain, my brain's breaking. All right, so next is then they have the zombie defense mode, which I do not like. I, I, I don't like playing that way. I like playing Civ. And then normal... Uh, we have all of this stuff, and then I don't like a term limit. I, I don't want to put in, you know, all this time into a game and then get to some freaking term limit. I just want to play. Half the time, I'll even take off some of the the winning victory conditions, but it's unlikely I'll actually get to victory on a game like this because it's just so big. So I'm going to do 200 for scout times. Um the random, I mean, you can change this to whatever you want. So you get something different. Um, and then that's pretty it. And, and I'm doing 30. Um, I think we could pick this up to... Man, we could pro I could probably do 45. 30 is hard because the game isn't built to do that many. And so by the time you've met 30 people, say you have a resource 29 people want. That means in a round you're going to get 29 messages for that resource at least the first time. And then they won't bug you again after that. But it, there is no like don't talk to me or don't message me option so that's kind of frustrating i just did a 30 person game and there is still quite a bit of land left over um on the map we were playing which leads me to think that we could probably i don't know 15 i let's go with 40 i think i think i like having land left over i think 30 was probably perfect um and notice we're playing on the enormous. That's a 140 by 47. These are way bigger. There's even a 200. The problem is um, I, I've never gotten to a late game. They're going to crash at some point, and it's kind of a bummer. Granted, you know, are you really... How many people play that long on a game this size anyways? But... I think 140 by 74 was honestly a pretty good size map. I mean, I think that's fine. Okay, so this is how I have it set up. Um, I just randomize my player normally. If I get something I really don't want to play, I, I'll just respin it. Um, again, we could save it again if we wanted to. Oh, shoot. When you change, flip with the map, it changes your city-states back. I do not want to have 24 with um, 
barbarians on. So it just doesn't go well. Okay, so that's uh, I'm gonna save it here in case it does crash. It's always a really good idea because it is a lot of freaking settings. So I've got it saved. It has a list of all my mods and everything. And then we're going to start up the game and see what we get. Um, really quick while it's loading, let's talk about, because he's going to start talking here in a second. Um, I'm on a 3090 Ryzen uh, 9. So this is a pretty heavy system, 64 gig, or uh, sorry, 48 gigs of RAM. I gave some away. Uh, so just keep that in mind that you're going to need to have somewhat of a beefy system if you're trying to do these huge maps, these huge games. I don't think the mods really matter, like as far as like running lots of mods and stuff. I, I don't really think that matters to the performance much of the game. But if you're going to run 40 sieves, you know, and you don't want to have in some insane... Um, turn times, which honestly, 30 sieves, I was really happy with it. Very rarely did I ever feel like the game was taking too long per turn. It feels just like I was playing it back on the Amiga. So I don't really have a problem with performance. Granted, starting up a game definitely takes longer because it is, oh, wow, great wall. This could be a really good, fun one. Um, first, let's see. Um, wait, hold on. When building the ancient classic wonders, you may spend builder charges to complete 15% of it. Builders receive an additional... Wow, that's a good one to know um also keep in mind i've got like my camera system running and i've got all kinds and we're recording all kinds of stuff and it's still i'm pretty always i'm pretty happy with how well this game performs as as far as like the game engine of civ 6 i think it performs really well for the most part i don't know where our audio was maybe because we weren't clicked in but we've got um, some pretty good stuff. I'd love to see like a giant great wall. Like if we could build that almost a little late game, um, that would be pretty sick. So right off the bat, we've got ivory. Man, that's not that's not much. Let's see, we've got some bonus. I mean, we don't really have a lot of choice. That's it's kind of kind of gonna be it. So what do we need first? We need some. Sorry, we need animal husbandry. So let me show that to you. So here's because of that mod, and we're on random. The whole thing is now randomized here's what we start with and then what's next is anybody's game same thing with civics so it just it really changes the game up on how how you play you know how, how are you gonna play the style um, So far, this is a shitty start. Only one luxury. Might definitely be worth a reroll. Well, 
What I might do actually is let's load up the game I was playing previously. It's this one. Yep. And let's show what a 30 a 30 person game with those settings looks like now this one did crash at f turn 430 1800 something um and i i just went to bed and then i had to work so i haven't gone back and tested is it like crash locked and i can't go any further or was it just, you know, a bad turn or New something? New frontiers of discovery expand our understanding. From the tiny atom to the majesty of outer space. Mysteries long tolerated are closer than ever to revealing their deepest secrets beyond what we can easily see. You will choose how to use this knowledge and push back the greatest darkness we have yet faced. Mansa Musa, great king of Mali. You are blessed with wealth beyond comprehension, yet you remain uncorrupted. Raise your eyes from the marketplace to the heavens, and satisfy your heart's great yearning for peace. Protect the prosperity of your people, and history will write your name in golden letters. So, I mean, you saw from the little mini map how how big and how many cities this map has. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll see load time how bad it is. I played it over the weekend, and I honestly just left the game open the whole time. So, just when I was playing it, I went to bed and I just leave the game on, so I don't have to load it up or anything. One of the things I really like about doing the game with 30 plus civs is I, you know, in the world there's like 200 countries or something. You just very rarely in civ if you play with like 10, are you ever getting the feeling like you're just one of those countries out there. Like you're just, you're just another country. You know, look at the map, like... It's just amazing to see how, how do I get a big map? Oh, there we go. It's just amazing to see this is me down here. And I mean, it, it, it's crazy how many, and then all these black ones are the city states that, you know, most of them, remember I only started with like five city states. So like, all of these are ones that came from here's one so if this one keeps getting left here they'll eventually turn into city state here's another one like these have even because they've popped up recently they're barely even going but it's such a cool concept because then the map's always evolving and there's new cities coming in there's people attacking those new cities and people that want this land. And so then they're attacking these villages and you know, there, there's more going on than just, Oh, it's a hut and barbarians and you kill them in the early game and then that's it. And they're done. Uh, they're growing and, and actually living lives and starting stuff as well. A few things other you can see, you can see the mods are giving me values, um, on the map. So that's really nice. Um, let's jump through a few other. One of my favorites. Oh man, one of my favorites in the mods. That's just you can't live without it. Is it tells you which each of the cards do. 
So normally you would look at this and you're like, oh, well, I don't, you know, well, I don't know how much this is. Which is the best card? Uh, and, and you don't know, but this actually tells you what all the stats are in the game that it's actually going to give you. So for most of them, you can actually like see, hey, this one over here is only 14 and this one's 11, you know, and this one's. And you can see that what's the best option right now at a glance. It's like just a glaring missing piece from the core game. Just, just insanely glaring. So that's a huge, just a huge quality of life thing. And then here's another like, uh, blow your mind hole quality of life thing. So here's a buy sell. So I can put up stuff. Like, say I want to sell any of this stuff. And then, it's just a quick sell. So between all of the sieves, there's 30 sieves or something. Now all of a sudden, it's going to give me... Now it's going to give me quick deals that I can just close this deal really fast. Same thing if I need to, like, purchase something... I can just jump over and it's going to show me everybody that wants to buy, uh, sell uh, di diploma favors and I can just quickly jump by 22 for whatever that was. That's a great deal. So every turn you can jump in and see, oh, I want to buy, oh, for a turn. Yeah, I'll buy that. And you could jump through and then see, oh, well, what about great works? Well, let's check and see. Does anybody have any like sculpture great works that I could buy? And, oh, nobody does. Do you have any his, uh, heroic relics that I could buy? You've never even seen hero, you know, her, hero relics because you don't even have heroes. So, heroes, um, let's see. I don't have any I can get, but I don't think I have any alive. Let's see. Maybe I can get one. Actually, I think heroes are done because of the time, because we've reached the uh, modern age. I think the heroes stop being something once you get this far. And then it goes into all of the other stuff. Uh, but they're just a special unit that goes around and can kick ass and do different things. So that's another nice one. Um... Let's see, what about policy manager, um, tourism, overview screens. Uh, wow, my tourism is just, you know, let's see, there's also like a global relations screen. I don't know if the core game even has these. You can get like an idea of the global relationships between everybody. Um, so that's, I mean, I think that's like, oh, let's look at, um, so you can get an idea of like how, so, you, so this is after I've um, unlocked all this stuff, you can see we went from like baking to, to gunpowder, to economics, to, and so you just see like there's a huge difference of how what order they come in so you don't know. So like now we're getting the nuclear program but satellites is up here and and so you you don't know where everything is and just this randomizing just is such a big difference like it's so nice. And then same thing with um, civics. So like the civic system we just we don't know especially not knowing where the governments are. Like, if you could get to, if you, like, unlock, because you go this path, and you can get to a government early, um, when other people went this path and can't get to a government, like, there's so many, um, more fun options in there that it's just bringing in. And then, uh, more resources and stuff. I, I'd still like to have more resources. I think there's still a lot more we could add. I need to find more mods to do more of that, but... So I think that's the big the big gist of it all um, is just uh, really it's quality of life. Like 
There's just, just in those things I've shown you, just give you an insane quality of life. Um, being able, like with the, um, the worker to be, I don't know where that wor worker went. Where did that worker go? Um, just b to be able to have that worker be able to like show stuff and see what what's more valuable or where would it be better to put something right now i think it's a big bonus so yeah there you go that gives you a good idea of the mods that i'm using and how crazy it is to have all of these different people being in one game i really think if you haven't tried a big game and you have a system that can handle it you really should try to to play something i mean you just it really is crazy when in essence i don't even know everybody yet there's still people out here, like civil, civs, civilizations, that I haven't been able to contact, I think. Um, it, and it's really difficult to even manage all the relationships. You have to pick the people that you're going to be friends with or that you're going to ally with. and Because there, there's so many out there, and you kind of have to pick. Versus if you're playing with 10 people... It, it's not even really like, you know. Oh, shoot. How did I get into this one? There we go. Um, oh, yeah, back to this. Like, you can see how it makes it easier when it shows you priorities or just color code stuff. It just makes it a lot more simple to see, oh, hey, you know, I need to go to that big pink thing there. Um, so... Thanks for watching. I'm Cyberax. If you uh, like, you know, comment, like, subscribe, uh, ring that bell, do all those fancy things, and thanks for watching, and thanks for enjoying Civilization.